all about getting out and learning what the outdoors is. Good evening everyone. Another week gone by. I hope you've got plenty of shooting in. I certainly have and I'm going to be putting the photographs I'm taking onto our new Facebook page which has already got a thousand likes and I'll be putting up some videos and everything as well as the season progresses. So do take a look at the shooting channel on Facebook. After all, 1.6 million people in the UK shoot, you know. So on with the news. Another paper has been released highlighting the impact of Gamebird release. It's a very thorough and fair peer-reviewed piece based on hundreds of studies dating back 20 years. It did mention negative aspects including a reduction in invertebrates in release areas, which I read as the birds eating worms. It went on to say any negatives are generally localised because most game birds stay within a mile of their release site and of course woodland is more likely to be planted in such areas and well maintained which leads to more songbirds, more bees and butterflies. And another success story for you, the grey partridge. Now take a look at this family. They've planted the equivalent of 17 football pitches of species rich grassland and planted 30,000 new trees and over 25,000 hedge plants. And here's the trophy that they've won by increasing the grey partridge at Oxley's farm from 8 birds per 100 hectares to 47. The net result 148 grey partridges in this year's autumn count. They've more than quintupled the species on their land. The Partridge Count is a free voluntary scheme which started in 1933 by the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust. I'll put a link in the description for you. Now, staying with the GWCT, have you seen their online auction yet? There's a fantastic range of experiences, something for everyone and something for every pocket I would say. Bidding is open until the 5th of November and you can even win a Norfolk McNabb. What's that I hear you say? Well, you shoot a pair of geese, stalk a monk jack and a row and catch a pike on the fly, all within 24 hours. And there's more good news. The government is working with the World Trade Organisation to ensure us Brits can retain our Melton Mowbray and our Stilton, making sure popular and traditional produce from across the country will be guaranteed special status to mark out its authenticity. Here's what the new logos will look like and these come into effect next January. Geographical indicators represent a quarter of UK food and drink and had an export value last year of almost £6 billion. Pounds. Speaking of food, the Country Food Trust charity, who gave out half a million meals during lockdown and is the official charity of the Game Fair, is now working with children in need to supply venison bolognese. That's a good introduction, isn't it? Many of you know the price of venison is dropping rapidly at the moment. Here's their track record so far. Thank you so much for all that you do. Just before I finish, I know there's going to be some questions about your local restrictions and everything, so I'm going to put a link in the description to the Gulf website where you can type in your postcode. That'll tell you everything you need to know. And finally, it is with great sadness that I report the passing of Peter Billington, aged 82. Here he is, look, in the top left-hand corner. CPSA shooter for England and Great Britain one of the very few who has the distinction of having shot a hundred straight at ISU and went on to referee the sport. Thank you for watching The Shooting Channel with me, Alex Say. Please share to your friends and have a look at what other films we've done. And it's all there to try and encourage you to get into shooting this great sport.